So how are beamforming and pre-coding related? So let's look at this multi-antenna communication system. We have a mixer to take our signal up to the carrier frequency, and then we have three, in this case, three antennas with their own amplifiers. And in this formation here, it's simply a case of having diversity, the way it's drawn here. So in where they all share the mixer, uh, then effectively what they're doing is providing different versions of the same signal. So that if we had a receive antenna over here, then uh, if there was a problem with the path from the first antenna, for example, if there was a wall that was reflecting the signals, and so the direct path uh, comes with one phase and the reflected path comes with another phase, if this arrangement was such that these two paths deconstructively interfered with each other, they could cancel each other out. So if you have another antenna, then the chance that, though, that the uh, signals from that antenna would also cancel themselves out becomes less. And the more antennas you have, the less chance there is that all of them are gonna have deconstructive interference. So this is what we call diversity. So there's an advantage from having a diverse number of paths uh, between the transmitter and the receiver. This is simple diversity. Well, how does it relate to beamforming and pre-coding? Well, let's look here. If we add an element to our picture where now we are adding the separate phases for the separate antennas. And in this case, we have what we call beamforming. And there's a video on the channel explicitly on beamforming that explains this in detail. So check the description below the video and you'll find the link to that beamforming video. In this case, we have the phase theta one of uh, antenna one, theta two of antenna two, and theta three of antenna three. So we have the chance to have three different phases, which means we can form a beam. And so the beam pattern uh, might look something as it radiates, as the energy radiates out from each of these antennas, it might be that we are forming a beam, or it can be that we can form a beam in a direction, in the preferred direction towards our receiver. We can also have different amplitudes off each of the antennas. So A1, A2, and A3, if we have different uh, amplifiers, uh, then we have a possibility of also adjusting the amplification. Uh, this is still part of beamforming. And what beamforming tends to uh, be related to, that word specifically related to, is when you choose these parameters to maximize the signal to noise ratio. And that's what we typically mean when we're talking beamforming. We are maximizing, we're choosing the parameters to maximize the signal to noise ratio for our intended receiver. And we can write an equation for this. So here's an equation which ex exactly just represents what's happening here in the, uh, in the analog case. So here we've got uh, our complex uh, value from our constellation. Our, so our, for example, from a QAM constellation, that's C, K, and K is the time. So we're using K to indicate time. So this is a symbol, transmit symbol. Uh, it's going to be multiplied by a complex number which has an amplitude A1 and a phase theta1 and go off the first antenna. So that's X1 at time K. And going off X2 at time K off the second antenna is the same constellation point uh, because it's the same signal we're sending but it's now got a different amplitude and a different phase and so on. So here's a matrix expression for the what's going on if you implement here with analog beamforming. Of course you can actually do this calculation in digital form and then you have a picture that looks like this and this is called digital beamforming. And so here we have the same thing a single input which is our for example, QAM constellation point uh, at the baseband. And in this box here, in digital form, we could multiply that complex number, which is the constellation point, we could multiply that by these values 
in a matrix in digital form and then we could put them out and have them all mixed up with the same phase now uh, and sent off the different antennas and this is called digital beamforming. Again uh, we're, do we're using the same parameters which maximize the signal to noise ratio. Uh, once we start thinking about this and doing things in digital form, uh, we can start thinking about other types of cost functions, not just maximizing the signal to noise ratio. And that's what we're starting to do when we're talking about pre-coding. So actually, beamforming is a version of pre-coding. So when we ask how are they related, well, beamforming is a special case of pre-coding. So now let's look more generally at a situation where we don't simply have one input, but when we're doing it in digital form, we can start thinking about having multiple inputs. And this is what we call the general case for pre-coding. So for pre-coding, we can have up to the same number of inputs as we have the number of antennas, uh, because those are essentially, one way of thinking about it is that is the degrees of freedom available to us is given to us by the number of antennas. Why is it called coding? Why is it called pre-coding? Well, I think we can see this if we start looking in the spatial domain, and it's sometimes called spatial coding. Uh, it's, it is just a matrix multiplication, and here's the matrix multiplication. Uh, so um, it's not coding in the normal sense. We're not changing bits from ones to zeros for redundancy, for example, in forward error correction coding, and we're not compressing the signal as we're doing in source coding. Again, that would be with digital ones and zeros. In this case, we're dealing with constellation points. So it's not what we traditionally think of as coding, but I think we can think of it as spatial coding. You'll get the get the idea, get the picture. So let's think about how that comes about. Well, with multiple inputs, we can still think of the same situation as here with a single input. And for a single input, for, let's say for the first one here, uh, with, with the appropriate, see this is a column vector over here. So now we've got simply, we've got three column vectors. That's how it matches up from here to here. In this more general case with three inputs, we now have a matrix in this box implemented digitally. Instead over here, we just had a vector times this complex number. Now we have a matrix times three complex numbers, one for each of the input streams. Uh, and so now we've got, uh, if we, we could implement it where we do a beamformer of each of these different columns. So we could have a beamformer for uh, this one here, this first column here would be a beamformer for stream one, the second column could be a beamformer for stream two. The third column could be a beamformer for stream three. Uh, by exactly implementing it the same way, we're putting this in the first column, and then we have two other columns for other directions. And that would give us, for example, uh, in terms of an overall radiation pattern, for the first beam, it would be our radiation pattern from uh, from stream one, if we put this vector here as the first column. And then we could have other columns for other shaped beams uh, for the other two uh, columns. And then we would have a situation here with three beams, for example. And that's one way of, of implementing pre-coding. You have three different beam forms for each of the input streams. And now you can think of it in terms of spatial coding. It means that you're sending stream one in one spatial direction, you're sending stream two in a second spatial direction, and you're sending stream three in a third spatial direction. And that has all the hallmarks of coding. You are doing spatial coding of the input streams. So that's why we call it pre-coding. But it can be much more general than simply doing uh, the maximization of the SNR for each of the three different streams. I mean, this would be, for example, if you were using it to three different users. So this might be user one in this direction, uh, user two in this direction, and user three over in this direction. They could be three separate users. You could do it as I described with beams in each direction, or you could be more general in the way you select this matrix. And there are other cost functions that you can use. So you can use, for example, zero forcing, where instead of maximizing the signal to noise ratio for each user, you could choose this matrix so that nulls were steered in the directions of the other users for each stream. 
so that this first column, instead of choosing it to maximize the SNR for beamforming, you could choose this first column so that it arranged nulls for stream one, it arranged nulls in the direction of the other two receivers. Uh, it wouldn't be maximizing the SNR, but it would certainly be minimizing the interference to the other users. And if the other streams did likewise, then this would also be an attractive way of choosing this matrix because you would be minimizing the interference uh, in that case. Uh, so sometimes you might want to maximize the signal to noise ratio, but then you're going to have interference. Other times with a zero forcing, you can minimize the interference. And of course, you could choose this matrix in a range of other ways. You could minimize the mean squared error, for example, um, and you could also employ other schemes such as dirty paper coding. Um, there's a link below this video to other videos that discuss zero forcing and minimum mean squared error. Uh, one thing that's important to point out for all of these at the transmitter is that you need to, if you're going to direct your beams towards the receivers, uh, whether it's beamforming or precoding, you need to know what the channel is at the transmitter. So you will have had to have done some training of the channel, uh, sending training bits, and find receivers and receivers sending back estimates of the channel so that you can then use those to find these parameters that maximize the SR, SI, SNR or find these parameters that uh, perform the optimal uh, metric that you're looking for, whether it's SNR or doing the zero forcing or so on. So if this video has helped you to understand the difference between beamforming or the relationship between beamforming and pre-coding, uh, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, check out the description below for where you'll find a link to a web page which has a full listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.